So today we're going to talk about polarization and polarizers. And I also have a new kind of laser, a diode laser. And this is a little bit fancy. It's in a temperature controlled box. So there are basically two, two things to set about the laser. One is the temperature, which is set by this top box. And one is the current through the laser diode, which sets the brightness of the laser. It's controlled by this bottom box. And inside of this temperature controlled box is a very tiny laser diode. It looks like a little LED from an electronics lab. And uh, the diagram on this case from, that I uh, got it from has both the laser diode uh, and also a photodiode to sense how bright it is. We're not going to use the photodiode sensor. We're just going to put a constant current through the laser diode. And um, you know, this, this is empty because it's in the, in the temperature controlled box. So right now I've, I've set the laser diode current to be 30 milliamps and I've turned it on and left it on for a while. This is a very expensive, very fancy, very constant, very stable current source, which is guaranteed not to go above some amount of current to keep the laser diode protected. Uh, they can be damaged very easily, especially with static electricity, high voltages. And on the top, there's a, this temperature controller uses a thermoelectric cooler. And uh, that's a device where if you run current through it one way, it heats up one side and cools down the other side. And if you run current through the other way, it heats up the other side and cools down one side. And there's a sensor in here, which is just a, a resistor that changes its temperature based on its value. And I've set the, the resistor to be about 12 kilo ohms, and it's reading 11.99. And right now, it's, uh, it's ever so slightly heating. This is about, this is about what it was when, when I turned it on and, and didn't have the laser diode on. It just keeps it at a very constant temperature so that the, the uh, brightness of the laser diode, which depends both on the current and on the temperature, will stay constant as we do our, our experiment. So the next thing in line is, is a lens, and it's, it's hard for me to see the lens while it's hard for me to show you the lens while it's in place. But this just takes, takes a laser diode, which has an output that looks kind of a lot like an LED in terms of its shape. It spreads out in all directions. And the little lens focuses it into a straight collimated path. And if you have a laser pointer, there's, there's a lens at the end of that laser pointer to take the laser diode in the laser pointer and focus it into a collimated path. Uh, the next device is a cube polarizer. And the picture shows that it's, it's basically a piece of glass with uh, two, two triangles of glass that are glued together with a gap and a material that's exactly right. So that light of arbitrary polarization comes in and light of vertical polarization reflects off of the interface and goes this way. And light of horizontally polarized uh, orientation, you can see this horizontal lines going back and forth, that transmits straight through the cube. And these cubes are quite good. I think they can polarize things to, this one's maybe better than one part in a thousand. So uh, only one, one wrong polarization component in a thousand leaks through. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, the laser diode itself is partially polarized. And the orientation of it kind of depends on exactly how, how this thing came and, and how I put it in and how it's aligned. And so even though the laser diode itself is partially polarized, I'm, I'm using this cube polarizer to definitely polarize it uh, quite horizontally. And next in line, I have the polarizer that we're going to use. And it is, it is mounted on these rails, so everything stays perfectly aligned. But it has a, a twisting um, a stage to it. And I can turn this stage and change the orientation of the polarizer. So horizontally polarized light exits this, beam, uh, this polarizing beam splitter. And if I have this oriented to maximize the transmission, then uh, I should have it set to maximize horizontal uh, polarization. And if I turn this 90 degrees from there, it should minimize that. So following that, I have a little alignment device. It sort of looks like a, looks like a t-shirt with a little target. And on the back, there's some material that's sensitive to infrared light. And it, it just allows a, a very fixed amount of light through and helps me align this lens with this X and Y knob. Uh, 
I'm just going to leave that in place because it uh, it sort of blocks all the the stray light that doesn't doesn't quite come out of the center of the laser diode and, and go through the, the center of the lens. And that shouldn't affect the, the polarization. So we're just sort of looking at just the center of the beam. And then finally, I have the same power meter that I had before um, with uh, reading out in milliwatts. And right now, with everything in place, it's reading about 1.5 milliwatts. And you can see that there's an actual beam here if I block it. The power reading goes down pretty low. It doesn't quite go to zero because I have a lot of lights in here from the ceiling and the studio lights to film. Uh, but I can assure you when I turn the room lights off, uh, this, this goes all the way down to zero. And maybe you can see the beam. There's a little bit too much kind of lighting here. When I turn the lights down low, uh, you couldn't see much of anything in the film. So uh, what I will do is I will turn this to various orientations and read out the power that, well, well, let it stabilize, read out the power that comes through and do that a few times and rotate it through uh, maybe 360 degrees. And you should see a cosine squared pattern come out. Now, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this has numbers on it. It has, you know, goes from zero up to 360 degrees, like a protractor. But when you buy the polarizer and you buy this stage, they don't come together. So there's a little mark on the polarizer that says roughly what the direction is for horizontal. And I put it in so that roughly uh, horizontal should be zero degrees. But in fact, if I, if I look for the maximum here, it's off by a little bit. And so one of the things you'll need to find in your fit is to find exactly uh, where, what this reads when the actual angle of polarization is zero. So it's a, it's a, angle offset. And I, I guess I wasn't super careful here because the actual angle offset looks to be 20 something, 20-ish degrees. So when I orient 20-ish 20 20 degrees, the meter reads maximum. And therefore, when I orient it 90 degrees more than that, the meter reads minimum here. And again, it doesn't go down to zero because of the, the stray light. So let me stop the video and take some data uh, with this setup, and then we'll move on to a different setup. Okay, so part B. Now I have, instead of my polarizer, I have a half wave plate. And a half wave plate just delays one polarization relative to its orthogonal polarization a little bit. But it doesn't change the overall intensity. And to show that, uh, I'm just going to rotate it. It's in a slightly fancier mount, but I can still rotate the mount. And the reading on the meter barely changes. Rotate it and let go. It pretty much comes back to where it was. Now, how do we see the effect of a half wave plate? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another polarizer after the half wave plate. So coming out of this polarizer, the laser should be completely horizontal. It goes to the half wave plate, which changes its polarization state, ro rotates it, basically. And if I go through another cube, that should measure the amount of that rotated polarization that is still in the horizontal direction. Okay, so now I've added this second polarizer behind the half wave plate, and I've attached the sensor to post so that it always stays aligned. I don't have to worry about bumping it. Um, now, as I rotate the half wave plate now, it actually does make a difference in terms of the power that goes through. I also took the little alignment um, t-shirt out. So I go through maxima and minima as this half wave plate rotates the light. And as you can derive from the Jones matrices, the half wave plate effectively, well, it does one of two things. The most accurate way of describing it is it mirrors the polarization around the axis of the half wave plate. So if the half wave plate is oriented at zero degrees, it will mirror horizontal to horizontal and mirror vertical to vertical. The half wave plate is oriented at 45 degrees, it will mirror around that axis and it will turn vertical polarization 
into horizontal polarization and horizontal polarization into vertical polarization. So that's roughly the situation here. I'm turning the horizontal polarization out of this first beam splitter into vertical polarization, which all reflects out of this port, which I have just blocked. So that very little light makes it into the detector. In fact, when I turn off the room lights, even less light will make it into the detector. So let me take some data at different angles here, which you will then fit. Now I have a quarter wave plate in the system instead of a half wave plate, otherwise everything looks exactly the same. A quarter wave plate delays one of the polarizations by only a quarter of a wavelength. As you saw in the video, uh, oriented at the right angle, that turns linearly polarized light into circularly polarized light. So at zero degrees, which is where it's set now, it's delaying the horizontal light by a quarter of a degree with respect to the vertical. But since there is only horizontally polarized light coming out of this beam splitter, that delay does not show up in the intensity and we get the full intensity through the second polarized beam splitter. As I rotate this, it is turning, turning the light into elliptically polarized light. And eventually when I hit 45 degrees, it will turn the light into circularly polarized light. And when circularly polarized light hits this beam splitter, as you learn in quantum mechanics, there's a projection. Half of the light would come out of this vertically polarized uh, output port, and the other half will come out the horizontally polarized output port to be measured by the, by the meter, which now reads about half of what it did at its max. As I turn it more, the power goes back up, and by the time I hit 90 degrees, now I'm delaying the vertically polarized light by a quarter of a wavelength was with respect to the horizontally polarized light. And again, because there is only horizontally polarized light, nothing much happens. I'll take data now for you to analyze this effect. And finally, we've got our most complicated setup, which starts off the same way, laser diode and horizontal polarizer. And now I have an arbitrary wave plate. So it's a wave plate that's there's nothing special at this at this wavelength, but it's mounted on a motor that is spinning slowly, a stepper motor. And on the back of the stepper motor is mounted an encoder, which can very quickly send a microcontroller the position of, uh, of the rotation. So it goes from zero up to one less than two to the 14. So it's a 14 bit uh, position and the, uh, the light goes, the horizontally polarized light goes through, oh, this, is a, this motor has an empty, empty tube. So the motor goes through the hole in the encoder, through the, the empty tube of the motor. It goes through the wave plate. So the wave plate's the only optical element it encounters here, but it's rotating. And then it hits another horizontal polarizer. And finally the detector. And the detector is still hooked up to the meter. You can see that as this wave plate rotates, it, the meter moves around a little bit. It's not, it's not quite, it's definitely not a half wave plate or, or it would go all the way down to zero. And uh, you know, it's somewhere closer to a quarter wave plate, but you'll determine, you'll determine what it's, uh, how, how thick it is optically in the, uh, in the lab. Uh, but out of the meter, I can take an electrical version of this signal and sample it with the analog to digital converter in the microcontroller. And I just have the microcontroller constantly reading the position from the encoder, which gives you an integer, and the analog to digital converter signal, which is also an integer. But uh, you will you will get uh, you'll fit a trig trig functions to the uh, amplitude of the light that gets through the second horizontal polarizer as a function of position.